Ah yes, the weather. A classic small talk conversation starter for when you run into that classmate or coworker you don't know that well in the elevator. But why talk about rain or sunshine? Wouldn't your colleagues respect and fear you much more if you brought up fire tornadoes and sprites? That's right, baby. Assert dominance by talking about weather that looks like you came straight from hell. Let's learn about five interesting types of weather phenomena. Not only that, but you'll learn some basic physics and chemistry concepts in this video. Get prepared to talk to your school counselor or your workplace's HR department because you upset your colleagues so much with talk of disturbing weather. Number one, volcanic lightning. Do you think volcanoes are scary? Don't worry, it gets even worse than molten rock. There's molten rock with lightning. To properly understand volcanic lightning, let's talk about normal lightning first. In a regular cloud, there's a lot going on. Ice and water are constantly clashing with each other. Water is lighter than ice, so water is lifted higher in the atmosphere, where it freezes due to the higher altitudes. It drops again. Basically, all of this rubbing causes the electrons in the cloud to become separated. The bottom of the cloud becomes slightly negative, whereas the surface of the Earth is slightly positive. But these electrons don't like being squished together. It's uncomfortable. They want to jump to somewhere with a positive charge to balance things out. Lightning is just these electrons jumping from one place to the next. A lot of times, lightning jumps from cloud to cloud, but the kind that we usually notice is lightning jumping from the clouds to the ground. Humans are generally kind of egotistical and more preoccupied with the things they can personally see and experience. Volcanoes, naturally, don't have ice in them. However, if you replace water and ice droplets with tons of tiny rocks and pebbles that rub against each other, you still end up with friction, charge, and electricity zapping of that. It's a similar concept as regular cloud to earth lightning. This creates a really cool and hardcore concept and possibly puts jump into lava a little lower on your bucket list. Number two, water spouts. You think the deep sea is scary? Well, maybe you should fear the sea surface too. A water spout is a vortex of water. There's two kinds of water spouts. One is a tornadic water spout, and the name is self-explanatory. A terrestrial or land tornado can cross into water, creating a water spout. This kind is generally very chaotic and bad and can destroy boats. Another type is called a fair weather water spout, which can occur in mild weather with small clouds. The way this happens is two wind currents blowing in opposite directions intersecting with each other. When these currents bump into each other, there's nowhere to go but up, and they drag a little bit of water with them. It's kind of like when you awkwardly bump into someone you know on the sidewalk, except in this case you both go upwards. This upward current leaves behind empty space which is filled up with more water and air. This is referred to as an updraft. Certain weather conditions can create the perfect opportunity for a water spout. For example, during sunrise, the cool mainland air may blow into the warm ocean air. These conflicting currents can create an updraft and then a water spout. Number three, snow rollers. I'll be honest, the physics of this one is a bit beyond me. However, I just think it's very cute, so I had to include it. The summary is that on rare occasions, snow is in the perfect condition to create a loop. These conditions include the snow being light and sticky enough to stick to itself, but on a firm enough surface that it can blow around a bit and form a loop. The wind must encourage a little bit of curling, but not be so strong that it crushes the loop. For some reason, I feel like I could eat one of these like a powdered donut and it would taste good, but it would probably just taste like brain freeze. Bonus fun fact, brain freeze is likely caused by cold touching the warm surface of your mouth and your blood vessels quickly dilating to heat it up again, causing pain in the process. The more you know. Number four, sprites. Regular lightning storms occur in the troposphere, which is four to 12 miles above ground or 18 to 20 kilometers for people who don't speak Merkin. However, there are electrical discharges happening way above this too. In the mesosphere, which is about 50 miles or 85 kilometers above earth, there's a mysterious phenomena called sprites. And and they're assumed to be a sort of opposite of regular cloud to ground lightning. They're happening all the time, but difficult to see or photograph. They look small from the ground, but they can be up to 30 miles or 50 kilometers wide. They also have what I think is a very cute name. The name Sprite has also inspired the naming of some other ultra high atmosphere weather phenomena, such as elves, trolls, gnomes, and pixies. I'm not exaggerating, those are actual weather names. If you're interested, I can make another video. Number five, fire natives. Remember the concept of updraft when two currents meet, moving upwards and pulling up air behind them? Now, imagine that, but with fire. How can I make a video on cool weather patterns without including this cultural icon? Fires naturally create a lot of hot air and that hot air moves upwards, pulling in air and fire behind it. I know what you're here for, to see videos of fire natives, so here you go. Oh my god, that was amazing. Not only did you learn some physics and chemistry, you now know what to bring up when you're trapped in another boring elevator conversation about the weather. So, how about that volcanic lightning? Talk of rain or sunshine is for troglodytes. Rise above, just like an updraft. 
Oh, and if you're new to my videos, I like to ask a fun question each time so I can get to know you all. Today's question is, have you ever experienced any crazy or dangerous weather? What was it like? Okay, see you next time and farewell.